Hey everybody, this is Tracy here for another edition of A View from Tracy's Point. And we are here to recap Invite Cabo Season 1, Episode 7, which was titled Undercover Lover. <laughs> So I'm going to be honest with you guys, I didn't take any notes for this recap because this show, this episode was so ridiculous. I didn't take notes and I'm not going to stay up and watch the re-airing of the show to take notes to do the recap. So we're just going to talk about the show. So this was the episode where we were going to finally meet uh, Larry's love interest. And so when the show starts out, Larry decides to... Go ahead and fess up to the fact that he is gay. Now, I personally don't believe in this sexually fluid bull crap that people are talking about because this sleeping with men and women and just ridiculous. I don't even go for that. Don't think it's cute. Don't think that a woman should be having sexual intercourse with a man who's having sexual intercourse with another man. I'm just not down for the swirl like that. So I didn't think it was cute when he made his little revelation and then the show kind of, you know, the show's been funny all season long and, you know, people on Twitter and social media, you know, have been saying all along that they thought Larry was gay. And if you go back to my first recap, I said my first impression of him was that he was gay, but... Since him and Bianca, you know, call themselves doing whatever it was that they were doing, I was going to roll with the flow. So now he comes out and says that he likes men and women. And where the show really lost its credibility was the fact that Bianca, so she came down and she finally decided to bring it up to Larry that she was having this conversation with Jermaine and Malaku and Agu, I think it was, and that they said that Larry had this love interest that he told them about. So then Larry was kind of like trying to get an attitude like, oh, they were telling his business behind his back. And then I think Malaku uh, walked in and he was like, oh, perfect timing. So he never really answered Bianca's question, but anyway... Bianca's reaction to finding out that the, it was a guy and his name is Corey that Larry is supposed to be in love with was a non-reaction. And I think that that was the most unrealistic scene in the whole season of the show. Because I'm thinking like, if you're going to keep it real, Bianca, you should have been acting like Kamani was acting when she found out that a goo put his hand down in his dress. Because you have spent the entire last six weeks talking about, you know, how you love Larry and you'd like to have a chance and you want Larry to be open and honest with you and see if you guys have a future. But girl, do you seriously want a future with a man that you now are saying that you know sleeps with men and women or date men and women and you just seem so unbothered? And I'm thinking, okay, two weeks ago you want the man to propose to you and marry you and now it's like, oh, this is so cute, this is so sweet, so... This agenda that Bravo was trying to push with this episode was an epic fail. It was truly an epic fail and it was not cute in the least bit. But let's move on from the nonsense to um, what we came for all along, which is a goo, Kamani, and Emily and they little love triangle that they got going on. So we know that Emily moved back into the room with a goo. So the two of them talk and then a goo tells Emily that... She performed oral sex on him, and he performed oral sex on, on her. And I'm just like, really, a goo? You put your, your mouth down there on Emily's Kit Kat? For real? For real? So, like, why didn't you just tell her that she went down on you, and then that been the end of the conversation? But no, you had to take it there and say y'all did it to each other. So, okay, whatever. So Emily decides that she's going to call Joseph and tell Joseph the truth. And of course, Joseph cussed her out and tell her that he, she's nasty and he don't want to be bothered with her and for her not to call him back. And she's like, oh, well, you know, I'm not going to give up on you. I really want to try. And I'm sorry you feel that way, but I'm not going to walk away from us that easy. Like she really has a choice in the matter. So they end up hanging up on each other. So Corey finally arrives and then Jermaine has his little moment where he's going through something where, and you know, we all love Jermaine. Jermaine can do no wrong in any of our eyes. So Jermaine is basically like, I've been your friend for 27 years. I have alone. They've known each other. 
And he feels that the reason Larry didn't tell him about Corey is because he knows that um, Jermaine is going to be open and honest with him and give his true assessment. So now Jermaine is like, I'm just going to sit back and watch what goes on and check this out, you know, and then I'm going to let Larry know. And then I'm going to let Larry know what I really think about this Corey guy. So the Corey guy uh, shows up and somebody on the Twitter said that, Dang, we didn't know that it was Kendrick Corey Lamar. So I guess they tried to say that Corey looked like Kendrick Lamar. But he had his hair up in a man bun, supposedly man bun. But he's a brother, which means that I guess his hair was perm. But anyway, Corey was a little cute guy, but not what I was expecting since Larry tries to pretend like he's all, you know, the S-H-I-T and the H-N-I-C. <laughs> Just wasn't what, it was more like, this would have been a boy toy for Larry based on the way that Larry has carried himself on the show. Like he's all in control and running things. So I was like, okay, this is just some random person he done picked up off the street who wanted to be on television and they decided to let him be on the TV. So everybody welcome Corey and you know, everything is going fine. Um, Agu is still trying to get back in Kamani's good graces. And I'm just sitting up thinking that is he going to sit there and tell Kamani that he told Emily that he went down on her or is he going to leave that part out of the conversation? So, of course, Kamani, you know, has her grown woman on as she has the entire season. And she's basically telling Agu he needs to grow the hell up and stop playing games with people because she thought... Okay, I'm going to give him a chance. He's being serious. He says he really likes me. And then a goo fix his mouth to tell Kamani that maybe if she had given him at least a kiss or some kind of affection, you know, that what happened with Emily wouldn't have happened that second time. Wrong move, a goo. <laughs> like, wrong, like, you can't blame Kamani having standards for you getting drunk and fooling around with Emily again. Now, I would have, res I respected the fact that you told Kamani that you realized you need to get your drinking under control because when you're under the influence of alcohol, you know, you do things that you don't necessarily want to do. Now, I can respect you acknowledging that, but for you to turn around and tell this girl that maybe if she had put out you wouldn't have did what you did. Like, that was a low blow and that was a low move. But a goo is still, like, I don't know if it's the battle of the pursuit now, like, just to see if he can get Kamani or if he really does like Kamani and wants a future with Kamani. But a goo ain't giving up. He's still trying. So what else happened? Um... You know, they had the thing with Larry and Corey, you know, and Jermaine, you know, making his little side comments and like telling Corey that he, his application was under review and, you know, he let him know when he had a decision. But for the most part, everybody was getting along and having a good time. And then they decided to go out that night because it was Corey's birthday. Now, we're going to have more doggone birthdays on this show because we, Emily had a birthday, Bianca had a birthday, um... Now it's Corey's birthday that we're celebrating, so whatever. So they decide to go out, and then Corey gets drunk. So he's a drunk like um, Emily's a drunk. And I swear at one point, Emily, like, was Corey was kind of half passed out on the chair. Emily sat next to him and kind of had her arm around him. And then he was kind of like rubbing his hand on Emily's side. And I said, now let me find out that these two are about to hook up. But Emily has decided that she's upset or jealous, you know, with the whole Agu thing. Or maybe she's mad because Joseph has broken up with her and she still has the hots for Agu, but she realizes that Agu still has the hots for Kamani. So now she's all in her feelings and upset and, you know, mad and not having a good time. And so that's kind of like ruining everybody else's time at the club. So then they decide to leave. And when they were leaving, I think it was Kamani, Larry, Bianca, and Corey. Oh, they decided to leave because Corey was about to pass out. So the four of them get in the SUV. So then Agu, Emily, Jermaine, and... Malaku are in the other SUV and so Agu and Emily get into it and that was the funniest doggone fight because 
Malagu, not Malaku, a goose voice remains the same, whether he's happy, whether he's sad, whether he's mad, whether he's drunk, whether he's lounging by the pool, like his, his voice is the same. It doesn't go high, it doesn't go low. So he's cussing Emily out, you know, in this melatonin voice and Emily's cussing him out, you know, and so he's basically letting Emily know, okay, now you're letting your true feelings show and you shouldn't be upset about what's going on between me and Kamani because it has nothing to do with you. And then Emily, at the end of the conversation, she said something and whatever she said, it shut a goo up and he turned around in that chair so quick. But I have no clue what she said because at that point I was kind of like tuning out on the episode. But uh, Malaku and Jermaine was cracking up. Like they was like, this is like Showtime at the Apollo. All we need now is some popcorn <laughs> because this argument between these two are so crazy. So Emily saying that Kamani is the issue in the house. And then when they get back to the house, um, you know, Larry got to take Corey up and drop him off in the bed. And then Emily, I think she ended up going upstairs and getting in the bed. So the rest of them were out by the pool. And Jermaine and Malaku was trying to tell Bianca and Kamani about the argument in the car. But then Larry comes out and he's like, well, what's going on? You know, he's all upset and in bitch mode. So Kamani is trying to tell Larry that Emily is the problem in the whole house and that, you know, Emily should be made to leave. But I think they only got like two more days left in the house. And then Larry gets upset, you know, he's basically saying, I'm done, I'm done. And he's yelling and screaming and then he goes running downstairs over by the um, tennis courts. And he's just yelling, I'm done. If I can leave here tomorrow, I'll leave. I'm done, I'm done. And he's like, he said, I'm done more in that last minute of the episode than him and Bianca said, babe, through the whole previous six weeks of the show. So he goes down and then Jermaine tries to follow him down and then he's yelling at Jermaine that he wants to be left alone because he's done. And then all the guys end up out by the tennis court sitting on the floor, you know, on the ground talking to Larry. But he's still, you know, talking about how upset he is. And he planned this nice trip. And this was supposed to be a trip of a lifetime. And they were unappreciative. And all they did was argue and fight. And, okay, the last six episodes, wonderful. This episode, they lost some little street cred. And it was... Like everybody else made the show, Larry, you didn't make the show, your friends made the show. And then when you tried to be a part of the show, it just kind of fell flat. It was, you know, Bianca not having any emotion towards you bringing this man into the house. And then your man tells you that he loves you and y'all have this emotional moment in the back of the car and you're crying and carrying on and... He's drunk, don't even realize that he told you that he loves you. Then they get to the club and he's about to pass out and embarrassing you in the club, but yet you mad at everybody else. And then for you to have a little temper tantrum at the end of the show, it just, like the whole show is probably made up, but everybody else did their part to kind of breed some believability in the show. Except for your part, you still didn't come across as authentic and genuine in the show, even when you brought Corey into the show. And then Corey just did not fit in, did not seem like your type, did not seem like somebody that you would be involved with. And the fact that he sat there and got drunk was only on one episode, and he was a drunk on, the whole, on that episode. It was just team too much. And like I said, I didn't take notes. I just said, I'm going to come on here, talk about it, try to remember, you know, what I could remember from the show. And I'm sure I'm forgetting something that was really funny and made me laugh, but I can't remember what it is. But next week is the season finale. So we'll see what happens, you know, next week. But um, overall, like I said, I have loved this show. It is so funny. I don't know if it'll have a second season. Um, I think I talked about this before because if there is a second season, what would the second season be about? 
because surely they're not going to go back to Cabo again. Um, maybe go on another trip and he brings some other friends, like maybe leave Emily and Agu off the next trip and then bring some new friends. I don't know, but I can't believe that there's only one episode left because I love this show and I look forward to watching it on Sunday night. So we'll see what comes up next um, after Invite Only Cabo ends. And I hope they have a reunion special because I don't think that um, Andy has brought any of them on Watch What Happens Live, which I think is kind of sucky because I would like to see them on the show. But Anyway, we'll wait and see what happens. This is it for me. Um, leave your comments below. Rate the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I hope everyone has a wonderful week. And until the next time, I shall talk to you guys later. Take care. Bye-bye.